All right. I am in my woodshed. I have done the birds, and I thought I'd come out and get an armload of wood, and then somebody asked me if I was going live tonight and on one of my walks. Uh, this person does not live in the area, so they didn't know that it was uh, rain in here. So, got my headlamp on, sorry. I'll turn it. I'll just take it off, damn it. So, I'm not going to go for a walk and get wet. It is 46 degrees. It is December 2nd. And I don't feel like getting wet. I don't feel like getting cold. But I asked them, what did they want me to go for a walk tonight? Because I've had a few people ask me when I was going to go for a walk. And they asked me if I would be hold conversations, uh, specific conversations. So I asked them what they wanted to talk about tonight. And they asked me if I would explain what it's like um, when people just don't get how I live. Because they live off grid too. They, they live very similar to I do, how I do, and... They get asked about the same questions that I do, and some of them are, people just don't get it. They just don't get how some of us hicks live. So, I am going to explain how I live. Now, some of you already know how I live, um, but I'm going to explain it um, to those who may not under, completely understand what it's like living this lifestyle. So, for me, I don't have any running water. I do have a well. I do have uh, an inside water pump. I have a generator. And I have a hose set up. So if I want running water outside, because I don't have plumbing inside whatsoever, if I have want running water outside, what I do is I go start the generator and draw my water. That's how I water my garden. That's how I get uh, water for all the birds. Um, the water here is good water. Uh, I do collect some for myself. I have, you know, water jugs that I fill up. And I do drink my water. I do bathe with my water. It's it's really good water. I just don't have it in the house. So this time of year, actually any time of year, because I live very frugally. I live very frugal. I guess that's a better way to put it. The proper way to put it. Um, if I don't have to spend money on it, I'm not spending money on it. So... For example, let's stick with water for a minute. This time of year, any time of year, if it's going to rain, I have water, five-gallon water buckets that I put under the eaves. Now, usually the, e, the, the buckets are put under, I'm in the woodshed, I'm in the big woodshed. I think it's a 10 by 12. It's the bigger one. The smaller one is like 7 by 9 or some foolish thing. But I'm in the bigger one, so it has a single pitch roof, so that's a lot of water. That's a lot of snow melt when, when it's warm after it's snowed. And I line the buckets right up on the back side of the, the woodshed here, and that's a lot of water. That holds a lot of water buckets. So that's how I do that. I don't have to run my generator. I'm not wasting gas. I'm not putting miles on my generator. So, this time of year, if it gets cold, and it has, you know, it does get cold, and the water will freeze that's in the bucket. So, what I do is take uh, a bucket, whether it's frozen or not, and I bring it inside by the wood stove for the night. The ice melts. It's lukewarm water by morning. If it's a cold morning, the, the birds appreciate the lukewarm water. Now, what I will have to do is keep swapping those pails out if they are frozen. 
Uh, in their fall, I have to move them so they don't get frozen in the ground and maybe crack the bucket. So, and then I just replace it with another bucket if I'm going to need water. If we're going to have a long cold snap out, uh, there's nothing for me to say that I won't have 10 or 12 buckets of water as a reserve. So that's how I do it. You know, it's a little more work. It's a little more forethought. You have to really pay attention because, you know, a frozen bucket of water that's frozen in the ground isn't going to do you a damn bit of good. So you got to pay attention. And it's clean. It's clean. You know, the, the ducks get on there in the summertime and the guinea get on there every night before they, they go to roost. So I wouldn't want to drink the water. Not for me. No, nope, no. Nope. But if you take um, a clean bucket of water and you set it beside a mud puddle, guess what the birds are going to drink out of? They're going to drink out of that dirty, nasty mud puddle, even though there's a clean bucket of water there. So for the birds, it's okay. If it stays frozen, it's not going to get uh, stale. It's not going. It's just going to be frozen water. It's going to preserve it. So that's that's a good thing. Um, seems I don't have running water in my house. I do have a sink, uh, and I do have a gray water system. It is not plumbed up. I have no use for it to be plumbed up. It was there, so when, you know, when I get old and decrepit, I could have that hooked up. It's just a matter of putting the, the, um, the plumbing underneath the house and through the floor. That's, that's it. The, the gray water system is it's good. It's good. It'll sit there for years just like that until I need it. So I heat this time of year. I heat water on the, the wood stove. I have a, a stock pot and it's a fairly large stock pot. I think it holds six gallons and there's water heating on the stove at all times. So that water is for my dishes. That water is for me washing up. That water is for cleaning. And this time of year, it's very nice to have hot water. And it's good drinkable water because I get that from the well. So, and then if I have a tea kettle, an old enamel coffee pot, I guess, a percolator. But I don't use the percolator part. I just use the container and the cover. And I keep water on the back of the stove for my tea because I really like tea and my coffee. Or if I want oatmeal, it's already hot, and I just pour it in, make oatmeal, and, you know, let it sit for a minute and eat that. So, hot water is always accessible this time of year. In the summer, and when it's too warm to not have a fire going, and then I've got to heat it up outside, and I do that the same way I do my canning, which is a little... I don't even know what you call that. It's They use it to deep fry turkeys. It's one of those square things you can get at Lowe's for like $40, $50. You hook a, uh, what is it, a 20-pound propane cylinder up to it. And that's how I heat my water and cook if I don't cook on the grill in the summertime. And that's how I do my canning as well. So that is the whole water thing. Um... I would like to get a manual hand pump just because I just want one. I just want one. Now, the the bathroom, I do not have a flushable toilet. And again, five-gallon buckets are very, very valuable here. I have numerous five-gallon buckets. Some are specific for bird water. Some is specific for my drinking water. Some is specific to my bathroom compost because I have a sawdust toilet. And all that is is a five-gallon bucket. I take a handful of sawdust, which is um, about a quart of sawdust, and I put it on the bottom. And it just sits there without a cover. And I take my, my toilet seat and just set it on top. It's not attached to anything. And set it on top when I have to go to the bathroom. I do my thing, take a scoop of sawdust, put it in the, the bucket. Just think of a cat in a cat litter box. Same, same thing, same principle, same principle. And then you don't have to, but I just, I close the cover. I try to close the cover. 
and something just came up, and I'm not sure what it is, but I guess I'm still recording. Um, so, and there's a specific way to compost that bathroom material. It's very specific. It has to heat up for a certain amount of time. It has to rest a certain amount of time. You have to add green stuff um, in a ratio like you do regular compost. And it doesn't stink. It doesn't stink whatsoever. And if you decide you don't want that pail in that bathroom corner, you just pick it up and move it to another corner. Just that simple. Um, so that is it. You know, people have been around when I've emptied my compost pails. They don't smell a thing. They don't, they say, that looks like mighty fine compost. And they don't realize it's bathroom compost. So, it works. The first year, I let it rest one year. The, I have three bins going. The second bin has been rested for over a year. And that goes, to like, to my nut trees. And the second, the third bin, which is aged two years, goes into my garden to grow my vegetables. Now, they say that you can grow any vegetable in what they call bathroom compost. I haven't gotten to that point where I'm comfortable with that. And I know it's perfectly fine. It's just I haven't got up here. I haven't got it okay in my head yet. So I put the, the bathroom aged two years compost um, when I transplant my tomato plants, my cabbage plants, my squash, my cucumbers, um, anything that's a root vegetable that goes into the ground and the compost, I use aged chicken manure. And I have a way that I do that, that composts very quickly, it's real rich. Um, man, I, I, I have a pretty good, pretty good garden with chicken compost, and I have pretty good tomato plants, cucumber squash, and all that with my bathroom compost. So like I said, I, I live very frugal here, and I do have chemical fertilizer. I'll admit that I do. I don't use very much of that. Um, I have it on hand. I just have it on hand. Which is what you should be doing too if you do not compost. So, um, I would encourage everybody to compost. I would encourage everybody to, actually I would encourage everybody to live like I do. And there goes that. It says recording something. I don't know if I'm still recording or not. I don't know. Something flashed across the screen that, I don't know, it was like two sentences long. I have no idea, but it looks like I'm still recording, so. But anyway, it is 40, probably 45, 46. It's raining. It's damp. I need to grab an armload of wood. Um, I, like I said, I am in my woodshed. Spur of the moment, I apologize, but this is how you're going to get it. I have a, a wool beanie on. Um, my sweatshirt my vest and this is me this is how I live and I love every second of it all right I hope you all have a good night and if you have questions uh, we can certainly do I'm pretty comfortable sitting here on the wood pile um, we can do I don't know we can do a woodshed talk I don't know I have no idea. I'm not doing this for any other reason than just to have fun. There is so much awfulness and ugliness out there in the world. And this is just fun. And if I can explain to people that don't understand how I live, because some people really ask some really, really off-the-wall questions, and it's obvious they don't know how I live. Um, but if you have any suggestions on what we can talk about, I would absolutely love that. Again, we can call it the woodshed talk. I don't care what we call it. Um, but I'm in. I'm out of the rain. There's no there's no wind tonight, so why not? I'm pretty comfortable sitting right here. But I need to go in and get my jammies on and relax a little bit. So you all have a good night. Mwah. Love you much. Bye-bye.